All right, factoring. Factoring formulas in the tr of a trinomial. What do I mean by a trinomial? Three terms. three terms. Okay. A trinomial has three terms. So all the trinomials we're going to work with today, I consider them to be straightforward trinomials that just have an x squared. Is it possible down the road it might not just have an x squared? But right now we're just dealing with that special case. Now let's review FOIL. Tell me if I did this right. x plus 5 times x plus 2 is x times the back half and 5 times the back half. So it's x times x, x squared. x times 2 is 2x. 5 times x is 5x and 5 times 2 is 10. Is that right? Is that FOILing? A little sour? So we combine those 2x and the 5x and we get 7x. So that's the FOIL. That's what we did. Now I want to look at this and I want to show you how to go about this. I know. So as we're looking at factoring, step one says we multiply the number in front of the x squared by the last number. The number in front of the x squared is a 1. So what's 1 times 10? 10, OK? And that number is going to go right here, 10, down here at the bottom. Then it says, list all your factors of 10 and add them together. So 1 times 10 is 10, right? So add those together, and you get 11. What's another factor of 10? 5. Oh. 2 and 5. And what's 2 plus 5? 7. It says use the chart to the right. Look for the two factors that add up to the B term. Let's go back to our problem. What's our B term here? This is the A term. This is the B term. So it adds to 7x. So the B term is the middle term. So we replace the middle term with our two new terms. And then we factor by grouping. And I'll show you how to do that in a sec. So here's my example. I'm going to circle my answer right here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this 7x and we're going to split it up into this 2 and this 5. And now I just want you to focus on these front two. This is great review for the quiz today between x squared and 2x, what's the GCF? Just an x. Yeah, they both have an x in common. So here's my GCF right there. All right, now, from that x, let's think verbally. x times what is x squared? x. x times what is 2x? 2. So in the parentheses, we're going to put an x plus 2. Okay, question? Yeah, um, the stuff before that, uh -huh. when you were splitting up the 7, right. um, why would there be 2x? Like, Do you agree that 2x plus 5x is 7x? Well, I thought that would be 7x squared. No, when we're adding, we don't change exponents. Um, we just, is there 2 pens plus 5 pens? Okay. Luke. What are we doing? In fact, we're, we're, we're doing the process. I'm trying to teach you the process of multiplying in reverse. And I want to show you the theory first, and then I'm going to actually show you a dump. I mean, do we have to do all the graphs on the side? It's going to help, trust me. Because I'm trying to set you up to be successful on a simple one. Hang with me for a couple times. And trust me, it will be all very clear after. This is brand new. Okay? This is a brand new idea. So I know, I know. Hang in there. So, now. So I write this x plus 2 here because that was the GCF factor thing. Now, I put a blank or a box, and I just write the x plus 2 at the back. I don't expect you to get it all on this first run through. It's okay. Now, think with me. 2 times what is 10? 5. So we put a 5 in there. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right? So my answer then becomes this x plus 2 and this x plus 2 come out front. And when I cover up those x plus 2's, in your mind, if you covered up this x plus 2, and you covered up this x plus 2, you'd be left with this x and that plus 5. And that's what I'm trying to show you is how to reverse 
the process of multiplying. All right? This is called the MAC method. We multiply, then we add, then we choose our factors. Multiply, add, choose stands for MAC. And we'll get to what that more that it means in a little bit. But this is kind of the theory. So flip the page and let me kind of take you through some examples. What is MAC, multiply, add, choose. Don't stress about that right now. I'm going to review that. MAC, multiply, add, choose. All right. So let me kind of walk you through a number of small examples here. All right, what number is in front of the y squared? A 1. So I'm just going to put a 1 there. Okay, so here's the first step. Multiply. 1 times 20 is 20. So if you want to put a little arrow, 1 times 20 goes there adds to the middle number. The middle number is a 9. So a 9 goes there. Now, because it's got to be what multiplies to the front number. Okay, so the number in front of the y squared is a 1, and 1 times 20 is 20. Oh, so you do A and C. Right. I'm trying to set you up for a more complicated problem, even though this is a simple one. Okay, I'm trying to teach you the same way I would four days from now as I am right now. Because I don't want four days from now you'd be like, wait a minute, you just added something. No, we said the same thing. But in all of our problems tonight, the number in front of the y squared will be 1. But I want you to get in the habit of thinking the first one times the last one. Sydney? So if the first number was like 2y squared, 2 times 20. But all of our problems today are just 1s. But that's a good point. All right, now, 1 times what is 20? Obviously, 20. What's 1 plus 20? 21. 2 times what is 20? 10. 2 plus 10? 12. 3 times nothing is 20. 4 times what is 20? 5. 4 plus 5? That's it. So circle it. So we multiplied. Then we added to 9. And now we choose this one. Why did I choose this one? Because it adds to the right number. That's where the MAC idea comes. Multiply, add, choose. If you can't remember that, think of my last name. What? MacDonald. Yes. It's kind of the old spelling. Multiply, add, choose. All right. So here's what I do. With this 4 and this 5, this is where the key idea comes in. I replaced the 9 with a 4y and a 5y. Do we all agree that 4y plus 5y is 9y? Where do I get that 4y and that 5y from? Right here, the 4 and the 5. Okay? All right, so that's kind of step one. Step two, look at these first two and think to yourself, What's the GCF between these two? Y. Just a Y. So put the Y out front with the parentheses right there. Now, Mr. Donsell, Y times what is Y squared? Okay, so put a Y on the inside. Continue for me, Luke. Y times what is 4Y? Now, when you say 4, I want you to say either plus 4 or minus 4. Plus 4. There's step two. Leave a blank or put in a box. Actually, I'd like you to put in a box. And then put another parenthesis at the back. And in that back parenthesis, I want you to write y plus 4. The reason you write it at the back is because we already wrote that first parenthesis at the front. And they must be the same. Now, answer the following question. Luke, you've done a great job so far. Box times 4 is 20. What must box be? And make sure you answer with either a plus or a minus at the start of your words. Plus 5. Plus five. Alright? So here's the final step. The, 
double parentheses, come out front as a y plus 4. And now physically take your fingers, do this. Cover up the y plus 4 at the back, cover up the y plus 4 at the front. And what's all that's left? Okay, y plus 5. So in the back parentheses, what are you going to write? y plus 5. Okay, so that's kind of the first run through. No, then we're done. The whole point of the question is not to multiply, but to do what's called factoring. Yeah, it's multiplying backwards. All right, let's look at another example. All right, the number in front of the a squared is a 1. So multiply 1 times 30. 1 times 30 is? Obviously 30. Look at the problem. What's the middle term? So it adds to 13. And here we go. 1 times 30 is 30. That's 31. Didn't work. 2 times 15 is 30. Adds to 17. Didn't work. 3 times 10 is 30. Adds to? 13. That works. So we multiplied, we added, and now we choose. Do I need to go further? Do I need to say, oh, 5 times 6? No, because we found the answer. All right, so that's step one. Now we split up the 13. What is the 13 split up into? Good. 3A and 10A. Well done, Jalan. All right. With your finger, cover up the 10A plus 30 and just focus on the front half. Between A squared and 3A, what is the GCF? A. Very good Canadian answer. All right. Once again, I'm still covering that up. A times what is A squared? Okay, so stick an A in the side. A times blank is 3A. Thank you for saying plus 3. Put a box. We'll come back to that later and put a parenthesis at the back with A plus 3. It has to be the same. It has to be the same for it to work. And so we know it's going to be there. Now, talk with your partner and fill in the box. Don't say it out loud. Just talk to your partner quietly and fill in the box. Make sure you agree. And in that box, you should have a plus or a minus. Just make sure you have a plus or a minus. Raise your hand if you guys agree on one. All right. Zach, what do you got? Do you guys agree with Zach? Yeah. All right. So, write the A plus 3 at the front and take your fingers and cover them up. What do you see that's left? A plus, A plus 10, put that at the back. This is called factoring. That's what we're doing. That's the command. That's what this is called. So if I say factor this, that's what this is called. Move it on. I'm just trying to show you lots of different examples to get the hang of this. The number in front of the k squared is a 1. 1 times 18 is 18. But now we have a new idea. What is it supposed to add to? Negative 11. And I'm going to teach you how that works in a little bit. Don't stress about it for right now. We'll deal with that later. Factors of 18. 1 and 18. 1 plus 18 is? 19. Doesn't work. 2 times is? 11. Okay, so now... If you get the opposite of what you want, do we have the opposite of what we want? Yes. If you get the opposite of what you want, and hear me on this one, then you change the signs of all three of these. Okay? And watch what happens. The 2 becomes negative, the 9 becomes negative, and the 11 becomes negative. And I ask you, What's negative 2 times negative 9? 
So that still works. What's negative 2 plus negative 9? Negative 11. So does that work? So does it multiply to 18? Yes. Does it add to negative 11? Yes. So multiply, add, choose still works. Yes. So here we go. Let's do the split up. K squared. Who can give me my middle two besides Jalan? Justin. Uh, K squared minus 2K minus 9K. Good. All right. Well done. Plus the 18. Cover up the back half. Who can tell me my GCF? K. K. Work with your partner right now and fill in that parentheses. All right, Katie and Justin in the front have it. They've got K minus 2. Remember the big box? And what goes in that back parentheses? K minus 2. K minus 2. All right, work with your partner. Careful on this one. Fill in the box. Careful. Remember, you need to put a plus or a minus. I don't know. We'll see. Jalan seems to think it's negative 9. Jalan, support your reason. See, I can put negative 9 because I can always change it to a plus if I have to without making an error. Why is it negative 9, Jalan? Shh, let him talk. What's negative 9 times negative 2? And isn't that what we have right there? Yeah. All right. Who can write my final answer? Go ahead, Luke. K minus 2, K minus Well done. Who's starting to get it? Wow. That's great. If after just three examples, that's how far you are, that is fantastic. I've taught this many years, and I've had students who, like, a week later are still struggling. So, all right. No questions right now. John? Yeah. What's, what do you need? Oh, you're stretching? Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm unsure. All right. Put a 1 in front of the M squared. 1 times 36 is? 36. So it multiplies to 36. What is it supposed to add to? Negative 15. Negative 15. Noah, do you need something to write with? Do you have your notes? Do you have a pencil? Yeah. Okay. Why don't you take notes with us? All right. 1 and 36, obviously is 37, doesn't work. 2 and 18 is 20, doesn't work. 3 and 12 is 15. Is that close? Yeah. Okay, draw a line. Well, so again, I said in the last one, if it's opposite of what you want, what, would, what did we talk about? We do what? We make them all well. You're really close. That's not really what I said, but that's the right idea. We change the signs. And Abby, you're going to see why on the next page. We change the signs. Abby, if one of them had been a negative, it would become a positive. In this case, it doesn't apply. But So we multiply, we add, and we choose. All right, so here we go. M squared. Who can give me my middle two? Grace. Um, uh, no, wait. Uh, Good. Negative 3m and negative 12m. Does it matter which way you go there? Negative 12 minus negative Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I like to go smaller just because it tends to set up the rest of the problem easier. All right. What's my GCF, somebody? M. M. What's inside? M. And minus 3, big box, back parentheses, and minus 3. Sydney, fill it in for me. Negative 12. My answer is Mr. Switek. And? Use the cover-up. See, if you use that cover-up, how easy it is? I know that sounds kind of dorky, but it just works. And minus 12. 
All right, now, to answer Abby's question, we got to go to the next page. Okay? Watch what's different here. Put a 1 there once again. What's 1 times negative 8? Negative 8. The reason I show this to you is because this is the first time we have a what? Negative. negative. Now, how do you multiply to get a negative? Negative times positive. One's going to be a positive. One's got to be a negative, right? Okay? So, watch what we do. One times negative eight. Well, what are these supposed to add to, by the way? Negative two. Help me. What's one plus negative eight? Negative seven. Negative seven. Doesn't work. Two times negative four adds to? Negative two. Negative two. That's it. There it is. So who can help me re replace x squared struggle Katie plus 2x, plus 2x. Uh, minus 4x. nice excellent all right my first two my GCF Sam you've been awful quiet you comfortable here between x squared and 2x the GCF is? Good. X. Good job. All right. And what's left inside? Brett and Hannah. Either one of you two can help me with this one. What's inside now? Nice. X plus 2. Good, Hannah. Big box. X plus 2. Does everyone know what question you're asking yourself now? Box times plus 2 is minus 8. What must box be? Negative 4. Good. All right, negative 4. So my answer is x plus 2. And if you're struggling what to put on the other one, remember we do the cover-up method. x minus 4. Josh. No. Never. Not on these ones. John. Question? Yeah. No, no, not going there. I know, but I'm not going there. I will. I promise. But I need you to learn the system. Okay? I, I'm completely with you. I'll talk to you later on the side. All right. 1 times negative 40. Negative 40. Adds to what? Six. Six. All right, so here we go. One and negative 40 adds to how much? Negative 39. Oops. Two and negative 20 adds to? Negative 18. Nope. Does three go in? Does four go in? Four and negative 10 adds to? Negative six. Negative six. Is that close? Yes. All right, now, Abby, you are redeemed. By many things. Is this what we want? So, so we switch the signs. What was positive becomes negative and vice versa. So our correct choice is negative 4, positive 10, positive 6. <clears throat> now does that make sense why I was important on that idea? All right, so Abby, can you expand it for me? Y squared all right, well, let me, let's, let's work together. You see these two numbers here? Yeah. You take those two numbers there, and you tack y's onto them. Okay. So negative 4y and positive 10y. That's where those middle two come from. I'm glad you didn't, you were able to articulate that, because I want you to, admit that's a key idea. <laughs> Noah, you've been kind of quiet. Are you comfortable getting the GCF of these first two? All right, what's the GCF? Uh, Excellent. Can you tell me what's left, Noah? <coughs> mm-hmm. Y minus 4. Good. Box. What goes at the back? Y minus 4. 
Okay? Who can help me on the inside of my box? 10? Is it a plus 10 or a minus 10? Plus 10. Okay. I'm not sure why I'm crying here. I think I just can't talk. So there's our answer. Um, are we okay with the 5 plus 10 part with the cover up? Okay. It doesn't. It has absolutely no matter. I would ask you this. What's 3 times 2? What's 2 times 3? With multiplication, it doesn't matter. And I've had a lot of students ask that in the past. They're like, well, you always put it this way. Just because I'm boring. Okay? It doesn't matter. All right, last but not least. You see this minus x in the middle here? It's actually supposed to be a minus how many x? One. One. So, negative 42 adds to negative 1. Can anyone think of two numbers? Jalan? Six and negative seven. Nice. So here's my question. If you can think of the factors, do you need to go through the whole table? One and 42, two and 21, three and 14, four and da-da. No, you can jump right to there. So we say x squared now here's my number, 6 and negative 7. So this becomes plus 6x minus 7x minus 42. What's the GCF? X. What's inside? Six. Big box x plus 6, and what goes in my big box? Minus 7. Minus 7. So my answer, which one do you want to come first? Positive. You want the x plus 6 first? Okay. It doesn't have to. So what's the other one? X plus Good, Luke. x minus 7. That's called factoring. Now, down here, I need to introduce you to my favorite square. My favorite square is 324. Because 2 cubed is 8, and 2 times 4 is 8, and it comes from 18 <coughs> squared. Why is it my favorite? I don't know. I just like the numbers 324. Because 2 cubed is 8, right? And 2 times 4 is 8. And I just think it's cool that that makes 18 squared. Okay.